spread the fear of God. False God, the white man. That's the law. The law. The law. No one can evade the law of cause and effect. Evil deed, evil consequence. A crack is taken by a woman, that crack baby will be born and have the same addiction. It's the law of rebirth. It's the law of cause and effect. The baby is reborn with fear. If fear is inflicted with the mother, it just has to be rekindled by an event in the life of that child. Look at these freed slaves and look at the fear in their eyes, even though there's no one there to harm them. It's reborn in their faces. The fear is reborn in the woman and in her babies by law. The law of karma, the law of cause and effect, and these were the tools used to do it. If a slave wanted to eat, they would put this mask on his head to keep him from eating. They would starve him. And those hooks around his neck would catch in the trees if he tried to run away. So if you wanted to eat, they would starve you. The tool on your right is to force feed you. So if you wanted to starve yourself to death, they would feed you. So if you wanted to live, they would make you die. And if you wanted to die, they would make you live. Think about what kind of people you were dealing with. Especially consider the fact that you committed no crime. No crime. Except that you wanted, it was a people who they wanted you to worship them. So this is what they did. The woman and the man. The European woman and the European man would kidnap slaves and sell them back. Colored people. Kidnapping slave catches. For money. Snatch your baby from under your bed. And sell it. That's why they call it the crucifixion in stone. Speaking loud when you understand the handwriting of the gods. This is what they did. It's the only way to show it. They shot your husbands when they was in the water swimming, according to their art and their pen, speaking to you. They sh beat the old man, 89 years old, 80 or 90 years old, who could not defend himself. They beat him to the ground in front of his kids. They shot the, the son in front of his family. This is their pen. This book tells you much of that, a hundred years of lynching, telling you more than 5,000 newspaper paper articles on black people who was lynched. A colored woman hanged in Oklahoma. This is just telling you some of the stories. Negro youth mutilated for kissing white girl. They chopped off his penis and kept it for a silver nail. That's what they did. Negroes taken from jail and riddled with bullets. The black man, the black woman, the black child, nobody was safe. 24 hours a day. Silver nairs. See, for the Negro's anatomy, they cut off his penis, his hands, his legs, and sold them as prizes, trophies. Is lynched by orderly mobs suspecting of killing a cow who they favored over the human being. A mule thief is hung who they favored over the black man. They would kill you for stealing chickens and hang you in South Carolina. This is just the last hundred years. Imagine what took place 300 years earlier. They say 70% of the hangings, there was no, no crime even suspected. They would just grab you off the street and do this. Black and in living color. This is the people. This is your history that you tried to avoid in Baruba Dog. They show it like this. They show you being put to the fire. Did you know that? The white man used to burn you at the stake. And the tradition is in Asia where you see the Buddhist monks setting themselves on fire. The ultimate form of pain, the ultimate form of sacrifice which the black people of America had to endure. This is a tradition to remind you when that day comes what they did to you. Standing around taking pictures and laughing. This was a joyous occasion, mind you. This was no sad occasion. They took souvenir pictures. There it is in Asia on the right. And in America, on the left, the traditions of the Africans of Asia and the inflict of pain, smiling, proud, what you did. It's always a crowd when you burn a black man. They all want to see and cheer as he burns. This is according to their hand. They had to push back the crowd at the burning of this innocent black man of anything worth being set on fire for. But this is the tradition of the American way. See, they would hang you, burn you, and shoot you at the same time from their hands bearing witness against them. 
See? They would shoot you running. They would shoot you on the ground and beat you. And they would stomp you at the same time. <laughs> they would work your babies and your mama in the cotton fields for nothing. See? This is how they showed it in stone. The whole family on the plantation in this city in Southeast Asia. They would show the man taking the place of a mule, pulling a plow while his wife dies it. The man is pulling the plow, you see. And they would show you in stone the work that the entire family of the diaspora was forced to endure in this beast with two horns, North America and South America primarily, the United States of America, where this history is carved in this history of the country. Is inseparable to free labor for 400 years in stone. The rock, the historian stone, the rock shall speak. Yeah, he shall make the rock speak. While you worked, you were beaten. While you played, you were beaten. You lived in fear. Here it is. Yea, the rock shall speak to them. The rock shall tell the story. Yeah, in silence. Screams out, yeah, they hung us from trees. Who else has a history like this? And you want to call it a lie. You want to call the handwriting of God a lie. You didn't know, did you? Yes, you did. You tried to forget. Once again, this was a festive occasion. They would take pictures and show it to their babies and their family. How they killed the nigga for nothing and saved the cow. Even the governor would commend them in Augusta, Georgia for the the lynching well done or the burning well done, teaching the niggas the fear that their forefathers put in the Constitution. They had to keep fear. Here's a Rodney King. A hundred years ago, here it is kicking and stomping this black man to death or damn near dead. This is what they did. And here's what they did the other day in L.A. It's the same people doing the same thing all the time. And here it is in stone. Hollering at you. Yeah, he gonna make the stone speak. Understand the esoteric teachings. The secret teachings. They catch the slaves. And they inflict the pain. They inflict the fear of God in them. Which they refer to as the crucifixion. Fear is something you live with all the time. Once it's inflicted and they made it their business to continue it. The crucifixion of the Christ. The infliction of pain, suffering of the Christ. If you really want to know what, who these people were, here's what they ate. They ate the whole hog. As you see them putting the whole hog in, in, in the pot there, that means they ate hog more, hog head, and hog jaw. They ate pig feet, pig ears, and pig knuckles, chitlins, fat back, ham hocks, poke chops, poke skins. They ate everything, pork. They ate the whole hog. Who else puts this description? They even ate poke and beans. There's your beans. Poke and beans, y'all. Yay. He shall make their hands testify against them. That's what they did. You're the only people on the planet who eat that much pig. The whole hog. The law of attraction is another name for the law of polarity. It involves sex, magnetism, radiation, lotus, color, chemical affinity, and various other things. But this law identifies the effects of the wicked treatment that the black people receive. How it affected the association, form building, adaptation of life form, and group unity. The first effect is that it subconsciously made them worship the white image, or the white face, or that which is close to whiteness. The brain is like a computer. It interprets and translates that which is fed into it from the eyes and the ears and other senses. Through the use of the science of fear, the African-American brain was conditioned and pre-programmed to process information negatively. Subconsciously, it was taught to do what the European told it to do. And through the use of fear and lies, they achieved their objective and the subliminal worship by the African-American of the white man in his image. The code of conduct of the white man was written down in this catalog by their founding fathers of exactly how they should treat the black